Welcome back to the Zimmer Biomed APP Chicago Open as we get ready for our men's doubles gold medal match that will feature the top two seeds, Jack Monroe and Rob Nunnery, going up against Will Howells and C.J. Klinger. And if you like fast hands, you better be prepared for this matchup. C.J. Klinger on the left side of your screen. He's a lefty, he's long, he's lanky, and he is electric. He's playing alongside his friend, Will Howes. They won a gold medal earlier this year in Punta Gorda. But, Chad, where have you seen them really excel this week? Well, Klinga excels with the counters. His hands are so fast. If you try to take him on with a speed up that isn't already set up, you're going to pay for it. Look for Howes to step in and be the one to start the pace, though. Took them three games to get past Max Manthau and Eric Lang in the semifinal. That third game, though, guys, 11-0. And they will be facing the top seed in Jack Monroe and Rob Nunnery. And these two, they really made their way through the bracket, Dom, with a fair amount of ease. Weren't tremendously tested. What makes these two such a good partnership? Well, I mean, you have the veteran in Rob Nunnery, and everyone goes to sleep on Jack Monroe saying, oh, he's newer to the scene. He's not. He's been around a while. <laughs> he knows the game really well. And so they nunnery. complement each other so well. Nunnery with those wrist flicks where he's going to try and pull that mixer off the backhand and forehand. And the best part about that is Monroe's ready for any counter coming at him. So again, gonna be a good matchup. You're gonna see Rob Nunnery look for that mixer off the bounce. And we're going to see if Howells and Klinger can handle it. It's a big key for me. Something to pay attention to as it pertains to Rob Nunnery is he was quite candid after the semifinal match. He said he didn't feel like he sped up balls very well. That's going to be a point of emphasis today. Bottom of your screen, Howells and Klinger in the dark shirts. Monroe and Nunnery in the whites at the top. Will Howells, first ball into the net. Howells in the pink shoes. Lives in Boca Raton, Florida. Another player that is newer to the scene after coming over from a successful collegiate tennis career at Notre Dame. Ooh, oh, inside out trickery from Klinger. Well, I mean, perfect reach in there from Klinger. Looked like he was going to go middle and then just took that one cross court. The difficulty in this one for Nunnery with that mixer and, and the amount that he likes to speed up is that he has Klinger in front of him. His target with that mixer and speed up is Zero, going to one, have one. to be cross court toward Howe. But that leaves Monroe a little susceptible. Oh, nice kid from Nunnery in the middle. I thought Howe's had a clean winner. CJ Klinger, 18 Zero, one, years two. old from Columbus, Ohio. Another player that travels around a lot with his dad. They go from tournament to tournament. Fire fight won by Monroe. But that's the hands of Monroe there, too. You saw Howes hit that forehand and kind of just hung on the forehand and what's not expected to come back with the pace that it did. Monroe can't make the pickup. 20 years old from Buda, Texas, has been around the game for a long time. Came back officially in New York last year after a, a little bit of a layoff to play other sports. Powell's just getting big at the kitchen line. Yeah, kind of just let that ball get a little too far behind him, try to hit straight down on it. It is worth noting now that we're back to doubles, we are side out scoring. That switch from rally scoring from singles. Finding a spot in the middle to earn the side out is Howells. A little hesitation there from Nunnery and Monroe as they're about to run into each other. You don't see many people who beat Klinger's hands, but Nunnery did right there. We hit into the body on the slide. So a good spot from Rob Nunnery reading and anticipating where C.J. Klinger was going to go. Too much on that backhand flick as Howells and Klinger are on the board. One, two, two. Trying to 
go forehand speed up, but caught the tape and it bounces wide 2-0. Two, two, two. Oh, it's a beautiful drop right there from Will Howells. Aggressive low. Gets right at the feet of Rob Nunnery. Three, two, two. Reset from Klinger in the middle of that. I think the, the most impressive one right there was actually the pace that Hal's hit that around the post. If he hits that hard and Monroe gets that back. Yeah. Oh, big ball on an ATP. That one out of bounds as well off the paddle of Monroe, and it's a three point advantage for the two seats. Five, two, two. Characteristic mistake from Monroe. Yeah, a little hesitation there. Wasn't sure whether he was going to speed it up or whether he was just going to bump it back down the line. Six straight points for Klinger and Howells as the top seeds take a timeout. We will take one with them. We'll be right back with more from Game 1 on Championship Court at the Zimmer Biomed APP Chicago Open on CBS Sports Network. Tuesday night at 9 Eastern, join the Inside College Football Crew as they break down all the action from the gridiron and beyond right here on CBS Sports Network. Michigan getting off to a good start in the post-Jim Harbaugh era. Coming off of that national championship a year ago as we are getting back to play here on championship court. Howells and Klinger are able to run off six straight points prior to that timeout. What does... A, of course, Jack Monroe, a student at the University of Texas. Texas moving into the SEC this year. That's going to be something to pay attention to as the year goes on. Win. Oh. 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 CJ Kling and go away. My goodness. Somehow he picks it up behind the paddle of Hal's, and he scoops another one from his toes. Oh, how do you get that long into the wind right there? And it's just too much pressure here from Howells and Klinger. One time, Nunnery can't make the pickup. And guys, men's doubles is in doubles in general a lot more about the drops and the dinks. How does the gusting Nine, two, wind three. factor into that? Well, the fact that that right there, that dink got on Nunnery. When you think Klinger is in trouble, somehow he got that forehand back. He looked like he was in trouble, and then he resets himself, Nine, two, gets three. on top of it. And game point already. Straight points on second server as Howes and Klinger take game number one. This one, all you can handle. Stay with us here at the Zimmer Biomed APP Chicago Open. Will Howes and CJ Klinger storming back to take game one 11 to two on an 11 nothing run all on second server guys yeah i mean cj klinger played absolutely incredible and the biggest thing was like chad pointed out numerous times in the last like three or four points just when you think cj klinger is out of position he's getting balls back and getting one more back and then getting in a good position to finish a point off what a, it, it would be this one here look he's taking it off of his left hip totally jammed and gets on top of it, rolls it down. Howes and Klinger, the third and eighth ranked players, respectively. Two medals together, gold at Punta Gorda, bronze in New game York two. City. But a point that you'll miss it run in game number one has put them one game away from capturing another gold medal. What does a run like that do, guys, to your opponents mentally? Well, I mean, you just went on an 11-0 run. Zero, zero, so you're, the, you're coming in and, and you're playing loose. Right now, Nunnery and... Monroe have to try to extend these points, move that ball around, create some opportunities, and that's not the opportunity right there. 
Monroe needs to stay a little bit more patient there, or if he is going to speed that up, take it cross body on counts. Monroe trying the backhand speed up, instead finds the tape. 2 0 lead for Klinger and Howells. 2 0 2. the feet of Klinger and that snaps a 13 point run going back to game one. That's incredible right there. Incredible run and a good start zero, here two, for Klinger one. and Howells too. Getting out to a 2-0 lead here early. Nuttery goes into net and because of the side out scoring in doubles you do all that work but you still don't have a point on the board. Zero, two, two. Couple of successful overheads for Nunnery. Well, and that's where I'd like to see Nunnery and, and Monroe go more is behind Hal's backhand side. If they can get that ball behind One, two, him, that's where he's a little bit more susceptible. leave from Linger. Why is Howells though susceptible on the backhand side? Well, he's so fast on the forehand. He stays short and compact. You, you're seeing two guys in Howells and Klinger that basically just hit a ball from that hit. You see it right there on the forehand twice from Howells. So sitting a little bit lower, you'll see the paddle position. You'll see the paddle positioning from Howells where it's down below the waist a little bit more sitting on that right hip. So the time that it takes him to get onto that back backhand side. Ooh, almost. Nearly got it. Nunnery not messing around with the overheads. Continues to punish them as they get back on serve. Good step in right there and a good drop from Rob Nunnery by Jack Monroe. Able to crash a little drop shot shake and bake. Ties it at two. Klinger is not fooled by the mixer yep. from Nunnery right now. He's sitting all over it. Well, Nunnery's tried to take that mixer cross court a couple of times, miss it in the net. This time tries to take it down the line, but Klinger's hand is just too fast. The first lead for Monroe and Nunnery since it was 2-1 in game one. That was, of course, before Klinger and Hal ripped off that run. A little nonchalant there from Will Howes. He stands straight up through that backhand roll. for the winner. Yeah, and that's not a strength right there as well, is that counter on the backhand. You'll see him sliding to the middle of the court to be able to counter. A reminder to check out pickleballsuperstore.com via the QR code on the screen to get your instant discount as Howells and Klinger have seen Monroe and Nunnery rip off five straight points. Runs have been the name of the game, fellas. What's been the biggest difference during this five-point run? I mean, you're seeing an aggressive Nunnery and Monroe, but you're seeing them change spots up too, right? You're seeing Nunnery go backside on that second speed up right there to get that last point and force the timeout. So I like the spots they're hitting now much better. Conversely, what's the adjustment that Howells and Klinger need to make? Well, I think right now, Howes and Klinger are getting pinched a little bit too much in the middle. You're seeing both forehands kind of covering. Both of them move so well, spread themselves out just a little bit more. It takes away that ball movement from, from Nunnery and Monroe. And then kind of look to put a little bit more pressure on Nunnery, force him to speed up a little prematurely. Feet still moving there from Howes. So out of the timeout, another point 
for Monroe and Nunnery. It's a four-point advantage for the top seeds. They're reaching with the backhand flick. Well, that's just not a good speed up there from Hauser. Well, like cross court off the bounce. I don't know if he meant to go that far <laughs> cross court there. I think he was trying to go cross body on Monroe, but. Oh. Catching Nunnery through the transition zone. So finally, Howells and Kling are able to side out to get back on serve. Waiting for the poach from Klinger Howells as speed could not get there. Well, I like the move there from Klinger as far as, she, as as far as coming across and taking that forehand, but I think he's got to go more middle than compared to going against Monroe. Uh, Howells just overshot the ATP, so a quick side out as Monroe and Nunnery are able to get back on serve with a five-point lead. Seven, two, one. Good talk there from Klinger, letting Howells know, let that ball go. Seven, two, two. Yeah. No, 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 no. Monroe thought he got it inside the court. They're going to challenge this one for sure. Well, it looks like. No, they're not going to. Well, Monroe asked, they said it was out. Yeah, they're going to challenge. Oh, okay. Side out. No, they're going to no, they're not, gonna not to they challenge. Are. They're not. They are. They're not. I think they are. They looked at each other, said challenge. Not yeah, everybody put thumb up. Call, call. So they will indeed out. challenge the call Two. on the court. Seven. The call was One. out. We'll from out from our view, but we are behind the baseline. So it did look like it caught the line from our vantage point, but we don't have the best angle. So only line calls are reviewable and it must be a rally ending shot. Those are the two crucial parts of a video review challenge. You get unlimited successful challenges, only three unsuccessful challenges. But after that third unsuccessful, you're issued a technical warning. And then two technical warnings become a technical foul, loss of point. Kathy Hudson is our video review referee for this men's doubles gold medal match. Now look at the baseline replay here. Yeah, it's right on the wall. Maybe. It, it looks like it looks like in one frame it looks like it's on the line, and then the next frame it looks like it's there we go. We're zoomed in a little bit more. Yeah, it's on the line. Bob Unitich is our tracking referee. He is having an extended conversation with the lead ref, Norman Klingscales. Not only does this act as a video challenge, it's also an extended timeout for both sides as Monroe and Nunnery have had the momentum for the majority of this second game. because the call on the court was out with seconds. And if it stands, it will be a side out. Extended video review here. But it looks like Norman Klingscales is ready to deliver the ruling. After review, the call is overturned. The ball is in. The receiving team will change their challenge. The receiving team has three challenges remaining. Serving team has three challenges remaining. We will resume play at 8-2-2. With Monroe serve. So the call on the court was overturned. Video challenge determined that ball was in. So it remains Monroe and Nunnery serve. A point Eight to two Monroe two. and Nunnery. 8 2 2. A 
great get. Oh, 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 playing the angles. Nunnery so. needed to do a Monroe there and switch to the left battle for the left hand. Yeah. <laughs> Monroe got that with the right-handed reset. Well, that's the benefit of being ambidextrous. Uh, good pressure there from Klinger and Hal. Just a little Third reaching serve. there from Klinger brings up second serve. Well, he wasn't in the best position there either. You saw the feet a little off kilter up at the kitchen line there. gentlemen out here and Will Howells, that one right there, that perfect reset off balance, off the edge guard, perfect. Oh, what Dorian throwing out the gladiator reference right there. That's what I'm here for, Sorry, we're, we're, references. <laughs> we're battling in the Coliseum right now. Missed return from Monroe. Still a four point deficit for Howells and Klinger after they took game number one, 11-2. But that's what we were talking about before this match, Dom, as far as Nunnery has a good speed up from the right side because he is able to slide into the backhand counter. Nunnery thought a ball hit his chest. Yeah! Puts it into the net on the backhand side. You can see him asking Monroe there what he thought. Tournament directors, we can only challenge out. It's not a... Challengeable out, call. So a timeout taken by Monroe and Nunnery as they have seen their lead dwindle down to two. Fellas, what stood out to you the most during this four point run by Klinger and Hells? Well, again, playing back what got them there in the first game and a real dominant 11 0 run to end that first game is they're playing that scramble mode well right now, right? They're resetting. You have Nunnery and Monroe who are thinking sometimes the point is over and it's not. And that's the issue right now is they need to continue to stay in points. But you're seeing Howells and Klinger are playing so well, resetting well, staying in and battling, and coming out on top, getting the ball up, so they can finally get down to the feet. Howells and Klinger took a bronze medal in New York. One of the players on the opposite side of the semifinal they lost was Jack Monroe. They lost that match. It was Monroe and Barrientos who made that surprise run to the gold medal in New York City after just partnering together for the one bracket. Six, eight, two. It was a smart leave there from Howells, but because it bounced up into the net, not the bottom crossbar, it's a replay. Oh, no, it's a net replay. Well, it, did, it did hit that bottom crossbar. If it didn't hit the bottom crossbar and it just rolled down the net, then it would have been point. Come on. Point. Come on. The subsequent replay is a point for Klinger and Howells. They worked themselves back within one. Great little speed up here from Howells, a two-hander down the middle, and Nunnery going a little long. Nice ball. Hesitation there from Nunnery on that forehand, just try, bumps it back, leaves it floating, that six-point lead all but gone now. 
Again, Klinger with a pickup from his shoelaces. Monroe goes for the Arnie, but can't do anything with it. 7 nothing run for the two seed. Championship point, and guys, all of these runs have come on second serve. Didn't see this coming at all. It was 8 2 a minute ago. 8 2 a minute ago. But now a chance for Howes and Klinger to capture a gold medal. Here is your Zimmer Biomet recovery moment of the match, Chad, and it's basically a huge run here from Howells and Klinger. Well, you've got an 11-0 run in game one to finish it, and then a 9-0 run in game two to take the championship. But it's also this scramble on the court, and you said it as well. They were playing scramble mode better than Nunnery and Monroe. And a fantastic goal there for Howells and Klinger. We'll throw it to Dorian, who's courtside for our post-match interview. Thanks, guys. CJ, Will, congratulations on your gold medal. We got to talk about those runs, guys. You ended game number one on an 11-0 run. You ended game two on a 9-0 run. From your perspective, CJ, what did you see that allowed it to be a catalyst for those runs? Yeah, Will played really smart and disciplined, even though he can be a little wild, Will, sometimes. Um, thanks, to, thanks to Proton uh, uh, and thanks to the Pickle Shack. Will, you guys have won now three medals together on tour. The first gold came because of an injury. You guys took the bronze in New York. Now you're golden once again. What has this match taught you about how this partnership has progressed over the course of the season? Yeah, I just think we, uh, we communicate really well, and uh, we have a great time on the court together. Um, huge thank you to the APP for running a great event and for the, for the crowd today, for all of your support. You guys are awesome. Well, guys, congratulations once again on capturing your second gold medal of the season. Well, CJ Klinger, Will Howes, get the job done, Chad. A game of runs, we always talk about it. Didn't really see, didn't, don't really see runs like that. But, no, I mean, that's incredible. Yeah, and again, it was the scramble mode and the composure for Klinger and Howes that really led them on those runs. Both the 11 and 9 run on the second server. We're going to take a quick break and we'll be back with mixed doubles action here from the Zimmer Biomet APP Chicago Open. <laughs> 